Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's Project of the Week. Well, I'm assuming everybody has downloaded the new exciting update to the Floriani software. I hope you're as amazed as I am. So, we're going to look at a couple of things that I think are going to be key to working with the software with the new update. The first thing I want you to notice is as the software opens in my computer, you will notice I've got a whole lot of stuff. It's amazing. Because I own Floriani Total Quilter. I own Floriani Total Control U, which is our flagship, our main program. I own Floriani Lettering Master, and I own Floriani Sketch a Stitch. These are all Floriani programs. So what we have done in the new update is if you own FTCU, all of your other programs will merge into one workspace, which is pretty amazing. Now, I own the other three programs as standalones, which means if I wanted to, I could come in here and I could open my Total Quilter. And it will stand alone whether I own FTCU or not. You may only own Total Quilter. So as you can see, there is my Total Quilter. You may own Floriani Lettering Master. You may have bought that as a separate standalone program. And there it is. It opens all by itself and it stands by itself. The same thing with Sketch a Stitch. There's no reason to open that one as well. However, if you own FTCU, it will now pull all those programs together. They will still work as standalones, but now I can use quilting functions inside my FTCU. You don't know how many times I've wanted to use the scallop function that's in the quilter, but it's not in FTCU. Well, now I have everything available at the touch of a mouse. It's all there. There is my sketch a stitch. Here is all my quilting program. If I go to my text, you'll see there is my lettering master. So with this, you're going to see we've got a whole lot going on here, which is fabulous. But you're going to learn, I think, very quickly to start creating workspaces for what you're doing. For instance, I want you to notice any time you see a little arrow, see these little bitty arrows? It means on my assets, there's my, this is my assets toolbar, my symbols and my crazy quilting input will not fit. I'm full up for icons, but I can still access it if I come here. Notice I still have rotate, trim, combine, and break apart because now that entire toolbar does not fit. Now notice we have some little dashed lines. So I could actually say, you know what, I want to bring you down here. And now I'm no longer crowded and here they all are. So you can arrange these in different order if you so choose. You can come in here and arrange these around so they work better for you. So you can see that's one thing you can do. You can arrange them like you use them and then with this rearranged, I'm going to come down and let me see what else I might want to rearrange here. What am I missing here? Oh, nothing. I'm good. So I'm happy with it this way. So now with this, I could come in here and say toolbars. 
workspaces. I want to save this workspace and I'm going to call it rearrange. Now I haven't taken any of the tools out. I haven't done anything. I've just arranged them so they work better for me. Okay, so now I could come back to toolbars. I can go to workspaces and I can reset and now it's as it was before I rearranged. Or I can come to toolbars, go to workspaces, select my rearranged workspace, and there it is. Now let's go a little bit further. I'm going to go ahead and reset. I can come in here and say, you know, for what I'm doing today, I don't need any of my quilting functions. So I'm going to go to toolbars and I'm going to close down my decorative quilter. I'm going to close down my Appliquilt blocks. I'm going to close down Appliquilt block creation. I'm going to close down Quilt Builder. I'm going to close down Fabrics. You know, I don't think I'm going to use any of my specialty tools here. I'm not planning to use any of these functions in the design I'm going to create. This is my font play, my color play, my you design it word play. Save to sew, which I can also get to through file save to sew. My name drop or my split wizard. So I could say, you know what? I want to get rid of my specialty toolbar. And you notice it it's asleep. They're just sleeping. You know what? And I don't think I'm going to do any auto creating with this design. So I can come up and say, you know what, I want to get rid of my auto create. Now with that done, I can come in here, move my toolbars how I want them. Oh, you know what, and I'm going to get rid of my social media. I'm, I'm uh, not going to use that one. So now, as you can see, I have streamlined what I'm going to use because right now, I'm not going to use those functions. So now I can toolbars, save workspace, and I'm going to save this workspace as Club Weekly. So now I have got a workspace that doesn't have the tools I'm going to use, and I can turn them on and off at will. What if I'm working and I decide Oh man, I think I do want some of my auto create tools. I can go to toolbars and say, bring those back. And you notice they come right back up. So I haven't done anything that I can't change with a mouse click, but I have cleaned it up where it's very easy for me to work with this for what I'm doing right now. So you're going to need to get used to using workspaces if you haven't already. We have had this feature for quite some time, but I never really saw the need before. I am using it all the time. I have just created a couple of my progressive classrooms. So notice I created workspaces that use just the tools I'm using in my progressive classrooms. So I also put in the full toolbar just minus the quilting. So you can see I can come in here and I can save as much as I want. I can also come in here, toolbars, I'm going to go to workspaces and I'm going to delete. I can say I want to delete the full minus quilt. So I can remove that workspace and now it's no longer in there. So you can create a workspace, say I'm working on uh, burp cloths, and there's a few features I want to use. I'm going to set that up for my burp cloths. So that makes it very simple for me to get to the tools I want. Now I've already talked about how I love the intuitive floating toolbar. I think this is absolutely an amazing feat. And notice, I closed my font play. But you know, that's one of the most accessed tools. So it didn't take it off my floating toolbar. So it's still right there for me to use without having the whole specialty bar open when I may not use any of the other tools. 
So your most used tools, the things that we access the very most, are going to be here. You notice when I close that one toolbar, I got rid of my save to sew. Well, I have it right here because that's one of the most accessed features. So if I brought in a design, let's go to our Floriani free designs. That's what I always like to go to. Let's go to September's. Let's go to 2019. And let's bring this in. So now notice my save to sew is available. If I select a portion of this design, now I'm going to ungroup it. How cool is this? It already knows selecting. It's changed my tools intuitively to say, what did you want to do, Kathy? Did you want to rotate mirror image? Maybe you want to ungroup. Now if I've ungrouped it and I select something, my toolbar changes to what I can do to this specific section I have selected. So start looking at workspaces, setting up your workspaces, and let me tell you, I look so forward to seeing you again next week as we start to explore all the new and exciting features of our brand new Floriani update. Looking forward to seeing you soon.